So, we continue our discussion of this uh, symmetry of normal modes of a D3H molecule with 4 atoms and so far we have reached this situation where for C3 we have a 12 by 12 matrix and the character is 0. Okay. Why is it 0? Because this minus of minus of exactly offsets plus, or plus 1. But we have actually learned something very very important from this exercise. What is it that we have learned? You see these blue blocks are what we had worked out right from the coordinates initially. What is this one? This is the contribution of coordinates of atom 2 in atom 1. Okay? Only the coordinates of atom 2 make a non-zero contribution to the transform coordinates of atom 1. Why? Because atom 1 has moved from its original position to the position of the original position of 2. Only the coordinates of atom 1 make a non-zero contribution to the transform coordinates of atom 3. Why? That is how the transformation has taken place. So, what we see is that if atoms change place, then the non-zero blocks actually go off diagonal. Right? What is the only atom that has made some non-zero contribution to the character? Atom 4, the only atom that has not moved from its own position as a result of the transformation. Right? This is something that is very, very important and you see to get this one matrix, we have spent like half an hour. Now, we are going to get the other matrices in a matter of 2-3 minutes each. Okay? So, the important lesson that we have learned is that the off diagonal blocks, non-zero off diagonal blocks are for atoms that change places and they do not contribute to chi. Right? So, if you remember the old English proverb, a rolling stone gathers no moss. Right? If atoms move from their own position as a result of a symmetry transformation, symmetry operation, then they do not contribute to the character. This is something that we learned and this is something that we will use now, things will become very, very simple. Okay? Let us go to the next symmetry operation. Before that, is there any question at this stage? Let us move. C2, remember where C2 is? Where is C2? This is 1, this is 1, this is 1. Do they belong to the same class? C2s, do they belong to the same class? Yes. So, it is enough if you work with any one C2. Okay? We choose to work with this C2 that goes to atoms 1 and 4. All right? Now, as a result of this C2, what will happen? Which atoms move from their original position? Yes? 3 and 2 will interchange. Right? 1 and 4 remain in their own position. This is how the picture is going to be. So, I hope it is not very difficult to understand that 3 and 4 will make no contribution to the character. Only 1 and 4 will make contributions. First, second point is 1 and 4 will make equal contributions. Are we clear? 2 and 4 move from their original position. Therefore, they do not contribute to the character. 1 and 4 remain in their position. Therefore, they contribute equally to the character. Okay? So, see now the problem has become so simple. You do not have to work with 12 coordinates anymore. You only have to work with 3 coordinates. That is all. These are the coordinates. right? I hope you remember this is x, this is y, this is z. So, tell me then what happens to x1 as a result of C2? What is x1 dash? Same. What is y1 dash as a result of C2 operation? Minus 1 is the character. What about z1 dash? It becomes minus. right? So, this is the transformation matrix I get. I do not worry about anything else. See, the only thing I worked out is this. For x1, we said there is no change. For y1, it becomes minus y1. For z1, it becomes minus z1. So, the matrix, the, that block is 1, 0, 0, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, minus 1 and you will have an identical block for atom 4. Well, atom 4 also does not move. Have we understood this matrix? Okay? Why do I not write the off diagonal blocks? Of course, there will be a similar block for 2 
and 3 as well, but they will be off diagonal. So, I do not even write all the only thing I want is character. What is the character then? 2 chi of C 2 is minus 2 all right C 2 is done. What is next? Let us do sigma h. For sigma h which are the atoms that move from their position? None. Does that mean we have to work with 12 coordinates? No. Why not? Yes, because all four will make identical contribution just work out any one ok. So, sigma h is very easy is not it x 1 what does x 1 become? What is sigma h? It is the x y plane z is your uh, c 3 axis. So, what happens to x? Same. What happens to y? What about z? Minus 1. So, what is the contribution to character of each atom? 1 plus 1 minus 1. So, it is 1 maybe you are giving me the answer when you said 1. I thought you were giving me the answer for the for, for x only anyway. And how many such blocks are there? So, what is the character? How much time did it take this time Deepthi? 1 minute? See, so it is so simple right character of sigma h is 4. Are you with me? Sure. Will we have to study this if I said something like this in NSM? S3, what happens when I do S3? S3 is similar to C3 in that 1, 2 and 3 interchange places 4 remains this 4 remains in its own place. What is the only difference? You are doing an additional reflection. So, z will become minus z that is all ok. So, what is it then? This is the only block you have to worry about from x and y you know already you will get minus half minus half for z you are earlier getting plus 1 now you will get minus 1. So, minus half minus half minus 1 minus 2 ok. Sigma v sigma v is z x right sigma v is z x of course, I could have taken this one, but it is more convenient if I take this. So, I will take this sigma v is z x. So, what will happen to x? So, first of all wait when I apply sigma v which atoms remain in their place which atoms move from their place again 2 and 4 interchange places. So, they do not matter anymore 1 and 4 will only matter and they will make identical contributions. Okay. So, what will happen? What will happen to x? This is x, this is sigma v. Will it change? No. So, character is 1, sorry, coefficient is 1. Y will it change? Uh, what, where is, yeah, y will become minus y, yeah, and z, same. So, what will the character be for each atom? 1. 1 minus 1 that is again plus 1 right. See x remains same z x z also remains same 1 plus 1 2 and y becomes minus y yeah, did not even watch. So, 1 plus 1 plus minus 1 that is 1. How many atoms contribute? 2. So, 2 into 1 is 2 this simple. So, finally, after doing all this, this is where we are. So, how much time did all this uh, take? One matrix, uh, I think we were 1208 and now we are tw at 1224. So, see, it is so much faster once you understand that a rolling stone gathers no moss. This is the representation we have got, right, using the 3n Cartesian coordinates. Do you think this is a an irreducible representation? Of course, how do you know unless I show you the character table? This is the character table of D3H. Do you see any 12 dimensional representation? No, right? You have 1, 2, 3, 4 1 dimensional representations and you have two two dimensional representations right. So, there is no 12 dimensional 
irreducible representation associated with d 3 h point flow right which means well which means what is written here it is a reducible representation ok and just to remind ourselves once again this reducible representation what is the basis for this reducible representation the 3 n coordinates 3 n coordinates out of which 3 should be rotational 3 should be translational remaining 3 n minus 6 are your vibrational coordinates ok. How what do I do now I have to break down this reducible representation into its constituent irreducible representations. How do I do that? To do that what we do is we again invoke what we had written great orthogonality theorem ok. What was great orthogonality theorem once again? Not the mathematical expression, but the philosophy. What did great orthogonality theorem tell us? That these matrix elements of transformation matrices behave like members of a set of orthonormal vectors right they form an orthonormal set right. So, from there we had written some 5 rules one of which was chi i r chi j r if you multiply them and sum over all r then you get a 0 and if you sum over chi i of r multiplied by chi i of r then what do you get what is this h what is h order of the group which is total number of symmetry operations operations not elements operations we know this right and this this is why we say that they behave like a set of orthonormal vectors this is the condition of orthogonality this is the normalization condition ok right. Let us see if this will help us derive a very simple formula mathematical expression by which we can uh, conveniently break down any given reducible representation into its constituent irreducible representations. Let us see. Let for a reducible representation let us say for some symmetry operation r the character is chi of r ok. So, what we are saying is this is chi of E, this is chi of C 3, this minus 2 is chi of C 2, 4 is chi of sigma h and so on and so forth ok. If it is a reducible representation, so uh, let me give that a name for reducible representation gamma this is what it is. If it is a reducible representation I should be able to write gamma as sum over i gamma i right where gamma i's are the reducible irreducible representation gamma i is the ith irreducible representation i is a general identifier ok. So, it is something like uh, sorry I made a mistake here I will write like this a i gamma i there has to be a coefficient also ok. What does that mean? If I go back to the character table, what are the gamma i's? This, 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 this right. So, what I am trying to say is this, I should be able to write something like for any gamma, I should be able to write a 1 multiplied by a 1 dash plus a 2 multiplied by a 2 dash plus a 3 multiplied by or uh, well I can in fact write like this uh, a 1 small a 1 uh, no no maybe, maybe let, let us leave it like this a 3 multiplied by e dash plus a 4 multiplied by a 1 double dash 
plus a5 multiplied by a2 double dash plus a6 multiplied by e double dash. Are we clear what we are trying to do here? Any reducible representation should be a linear combination of the irreducible representations. So, the reducible representation that we have the 12, 0, so on and so forth should we should be able to write it as a linear sum like this. So, our job at hand is can we have a way of finding the values of a1, a2, a3 and so on and so forth. Are we clear? So, this is the general expression gamma is equal to gamma i a i gamma i. Can you tell me how I will be able to write chi of r in that case? Chi of r is the uh, character for the symmetry operation r in the reducible representation. What will be the expression for chi of r starting from here? I will write it see if you that makes sense sum over i a i chi i of r. Does this make sense? What is chi i of r? Let us say we are talking about the C2 dashed symmetry operation. These are the chi i's of r. Okay. In the reducible representation, whatever character I have for C2 dash should be a linear sum of this 1 minus 1 0 1 minus 1 0. Does that make sense? Right? Why? Because the reducible representation itself is a linear sum of the irreducible representations. See if you are okay with this. If not, please ask whatever doubt you have. Once we are all clear, we will go ahead. Does this make sense? Chi of r is a linear sum of the characters of that symmetry operation r in the different uh, irreducible representations. If there is a doubt, this is the time to ask for every r for every r are the coefficients the same this is the question that should come to our mind yes it is yes it is that's what we are trying to say right when we write this gamma equal to sum over i ai gamma i what we mean is that for no matter which r you take the same uh, linear combination should hold it cannot be different for different R's because then you will not get the same reducible representation. Okay? That is the question I was actually waiting for. Great. Now, we will go ahead. Now, see chi R and what I will do is to make things perhaps a little easier to understand, I will expand that uh, linear combination on the right hand side. I will write like this a 1 chi 1 r you will understand in a while why I have left the space between a 1 and chi 1 r plus a 2 chi 2 r plus so on and so forth plus let us say take some specific one a j chi j r plus what will be the last one? It does not matter, we will write like this. Okay. This is what it is. So, what is a very common technique that we use all the time in quantum mechanics? When we have linear sums and all and we have to uh, simplify it, make a big expression small, there is some common trick that we use all the time. Yes. So, how do I, how do we do that? We left multiply by one of these vectors and then sum over. What we will do is, we will left multiply We will left multiply by say this one chi j r. So, write that ok. 
okay i've just left multiply done nothing else now i'll complete the trick what what should i do sum over all r right all right so see what is this one sum over r this is written very badly chi j r chi 1 r j is not equal to 1 right j is some other number so sum over r chi j r chi 1 r what is that 0 right so this is equal to 0 what about this 0 what about this h and everything else is 0 isn't it so what i have then is i have sum over r chi j r chi r is equal to aj into h or if I want to write in terms of aj, aj is equal to 1 by h sum over r chi j r chi r. What is aj? aj is the coefficient of the jth irreducible representation. What is chi j of r? It is the character for symmetry operation r in the jth irreducible representation what is chi of r it is the character of the same symmetry operation r in the, the in the reducible representation okay so now see we already know the values of chi of r right 12 0 minus 2 4 minus 2 2 and if I look at the character table I also know the values of all chi jrs is that right. So we can find out the values of ajs for all j's ok you just have to work it out yes ok chi is character. So, if it is if I only write chi of r chi of r you have understood ok chi j r means let us see 1 2 3 see e dash that for that j equal to 3. If I choose the symmetry operation sigma h then chi j r for sigma h for e dash is 2. So, chi j of r is the character of the symmetry operation R in the jth irreducible representation. And are you answered, Manthan? Is there any other question? If not, now I want some answers. Homework? You have this character table D3H? You have this reducible representation and you have this rather simple mathematical expression by which you can decompose or maybe I, again I will resort to dramatics a little bit by which you can reduce the reducible representation into its constituent irreducible representations that cannot be reduced any further right. So, please do that for homework ok. Work out the values of a j and that is where we will start from next day right. Thanks.